Welcome to another video with Mr. Long and we're looking at Microsoft Excel spreadsheets and we are looking in this video at conditional formatting. How do we change the format of cells based on a particular condition? So yeah, I've got a spreadsheet with a whole bunch of data and we want to color code some of the data according to what the value is in particular cells. And in order to do that, we're just going to be using the conditional formatting options. And what's nice is it gives you all the different options available. So let's try them out. Let's first start off with the highlight cells. So if you want to highlight particular cells, maybe you want all the cells that are bigger than a certain number. So let's take this example. Here I've got a whole bunch of discounts. I want you to display all the ones that are 10 or more in a particular color or format. So I'm going to select all of these cells. So select all the cells that you want. So I want those cells and we're going to go conditional formatting, highlight, and we want all those that are greater than, and we're going to say greater than, and we can specify what it must look like. They give me some pre-populated ideas of what we could have if we want. I'm going to make it custom format and I'm going to change. You can either change the style, the category, you can change the font. I'm going to make them bold and I'm going to make the text be red. That's what I want it to look like. You can even add borders of particular colors or add fills, but I just want in this case there to be a bold red color. If the cell is greater than and we want it to be 10, greater than 10 and click OK. And so you'll notice that greater than 10 does not mean equal to 10. So there you can see the 15 has been highlighted in red. If I change one of these other numbers to, for example, 12, which is more than 10, that will also go now change to a red text. Now, if I wanted greater than equal to 10, we can obviously come here to conditional formatting. We can come here to managing the rules. And here we can edit this rule. And I'm going to specify not greater than, but greater than equal to 10 must be that format and then I will plot and you can see that all the 10s and 12s and 15s are now in red text so you can play around with all those different highlights over there now if I want to highlight the top 10 for example or top 10 percent of a particular set of values I select those cells let's go try the bottom and top rules where we want the top 10 percent to be in a particular format we can click that or if you want all those that are above average all those that are below average you got all these different options we can say above 10 percent and all those that are above 10%, I'm going to put a custom format and we're going to make their fill, for example, be in green. So if I do that, go OK. So that is the top 10% of all those values. If I wanted more options, you can obviously come here to foundational formatting, go manage the rules. And when you click over here, you want to edit it. They give you all these options. If you want top 10 or bottom, if you want 10%, for example, or within a range, you can format that over there. If you want it below average, you can come over here to change only the values that are below or above average. And you can specify even the standard deviation if you know your statistics. Now, if I want to color code all these marks based on, for example, the higher marks on a particular color and the lower marks in a different color, you can come here to conditional formatting and use data bars where you can have different colors or color scales. So let's try the data bars first. Let's try the default there. You can see if I just put my mouse over, you can see all those marks. I have like their own mini graph to determine what they are with obviously the full value of the cell being whatever the max mark is. You can specify the color. You can do even solid fill if you want. If we do color schemes, then we can specify all the top marks can be in green. In this case, the top marks are in green, the middle marks are in yellow, and the bottom marks are in red. Or if we go here to icon sets, we can specify a particular icon. For example, if we want it to be little green circles for the top marks and red circles for the bottom marks and then yellow circles for the middle marks. So you can use all these options available. If you want more options, more specific options, then we can come here to new rule. And we can have a two color scale where the lowest mark is a particular color and you can specify what color you want. So if I wanted the bottom color to be pink and the top color to be green, there you can see the top marks are in a more green color, the bottom marks are in a more pink color and it's got variations of shades in between. I'm going to go change that rule. Let's go manage that rule and we want to edit it and we can change it to a three color scale if you want a third color in the middle or we can change it to a data bar where we can specify the details of the data bar. If there's an automatic max value or we can specify the max value as a particular number so that so we can say the max number is 100. If we did that, then you would see that 50 would only be filled halfway and the rest would be even less. So there you can see that the full cell would be considered 100. So there, that's why 50 is only halfway. 
And if you wanted icon sets, you can come over here and specify the different types of icon sets that are already available to you. And you can customize it to other particular combinations of those as well. And you can make it based on particular percentages or formulas or percentiles, depending on what you want. Now over here, you could do something, for example, if you want all the ABCs to be in a particular color, we can go here and say we want a new rule. This is another option where you can get all the different options. And we want the cells value that contain or that is equal to, I'm going to type in ABC over there. And we want it to be, in this case, we want these ones to be blue. And if I click OK, you can see all the ABCs are now in blue. Now I'm going to select the same range and create a new rule. And this is where the cell is equal to X, Y, Z. And I want these ones to be in a yellow shade. And so if I want to go manage those rules, you can come here to manage rules and you can see that there are multiple rules available. You can specify the order if, for example, they conflict with each other, which one has precedence over the other. If you want to remove a rule, you can delete it. You can duplicate the rule and so on. If you want to get rid of the rules, I've selected that. I'm going to come here to formatting and just clear all the rules from the selected cells or from the entire sheet. I don't want to get rid of all these other ones. I just want the ones that I just did. So I'm going to get rid of those ones. And there you can see it's all been cleared. And the last conditional formatting I want to show you is quite tricky. So we showed you how to change the color of a particular cell or change anything that's to do with the actual cell itself. If you go new rule, you'll be using all these options. You can even look for unique values or duplicate values. There could also be another option available as well in a range of cells. But sometimes you want some cells to change based on the value in other cells. And if that's the case, then you would need to use a formula. So let's try the basic one first. We said earlier that we want to change, for example, ABC. We wanted to change that cell to be a yellow color for this case. Let's say yellow. If I apply that, you can see only the ABC cells are changed. But imagine if I wanted this whole row to be yellow, if that cell is ABC. So this entire group of cells is based on what that value is. So what I'm going to do is I need to use a formula. So I'm going to select all the cells over here. And I'm going to go to conditional formatting and go create a new rule. And I'm going to say use a formula to determine what the cells format is. Because the formula is if we were looking at other cells to determine the value or the condition of the format for this particular cell. So I'm looking at C4. So I'm going to click over here to the formula and say when C4, and it needs to be a true false. So you need to say is it equal to something? Is it less than something? Is it greater than or equal to those options? So you want to have a question if that is equal to the text ABC and I put it in double quotes here. If C4 equals to ABC, then I want all those cells to be a particular yellow color. If C4 equals ABC, if that is a yes, then do this. If it's not, then it won't. So you need a formula that you can say yes to so that if the answer is yes or true, then it will apply this condition. So if I apply this, this will not work correctly and I'll show you why. So what it's done is it's changed all the cells to that yellow because it's always referring to that particular block. But I don't want it to do that. I want it to, when it goes to this row, to refer to C5 and then refer to C6. So I'm going to go edit that particular format or conditional format. Let's go manage the rules. And this is the one we're looking at. Because you can see there's a whole bunch of formats because we've done a whole bunch on all the others. And it's kept the other formats. It's just added this format to the formats that we've done. But I want to go edit this one. And I don't want that C4 to stay C4 when I copy it down. Remember the dollar sign means it locks the C and that dollar sign locks the 4. When I move down, when I'm looking at C4, when I move to the next row, I want to refer to C5 and then C6. So I'm always wanting the C, but the 4 must be able to change. So I'm going to take the dollar sign away from the 4 so that it will move to 5, 6, 7. And when I do that and go OK, you'll see that now it works. So now it's applying if this row C4 is ABC, it'll make it yellow. If C5 in this row is ABC, it'll make it yellow, which it's not, and then so on and so on. So that's sometimes if you want to create a formula, if you want to change the condition of a cell based on the value in another particular cell or block, then you want to maybe use that formula option. And that's probably the most technically advanced one that you'll need to know. But as you can see, there are already a whole bunch of predefined ones that are very easy to use, which you can use to make sure that your text and your spreadsheets look quite dynamic and you can highlight particular values based on the value in the cells. And so that is conditional formatting. 
I'm just going to show you something quite nifty here as an extra fun little example. Here I've got a spreadsheet with a whole bunch of numbers and you can see the first row is red and then the second row is green and the third row is blue but it's all different combinations of numbers and all these numbers range from 0 to 255. Now what this is is the different variations of red. So if you go look at the conditional formatting for this particular block it's basically representing if we have a cell how much red we want to display. So if I edit this rule we go from 0 to 255. If we go to full 255 that means we've got the maximum amount of red that we want but if we don't have the maximum amount of red we're going to go to no red or which means we want to make it black which means that's why we make it zero and make it naught okay so that's what we're doing with the red and the same applies to the green and the blue cells and so what we are doing is we creating like a scale of 0 to 255 for each one of these blocks uh, for those of you who know a pixel in an image or a photo comprises of pixels which represent three colors and those three colors are the red green and blue now we can't represent red green and blue in one block but we can make them underneath each other which means if I zoom out a bit then what happens is those three rows almost get close together almost close enough to almost form like a pixel so this way if I make this really really small and I keep going small and keep going keeping you'll notice that this Excel spreadsheet is actually a photo of me. So all of those little blocks represent almost like little pixels. So there we go. There's a picture of Mr. Long wearing a cool shirt again. This is a way to show you how conditional formatting formatted these cells in such a way that we made it into an image. If you want to convert a photo of yours into some magical spreadsheet, then you can go to this website at think-maths.co.uk slash spreadsheet, and there you can upload a photo and they'll convert it into a spreadsheet like I just showed you there. For more Excel videos, go to our YouTube channel, click on the subscribe button. We'd love for you to support our channel. Go check out our more playlists for Excel and follow us on TikTok as well at Mr. Long Education. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long way.